why I use Linux over Windows or Mac OS. And it's one word, productivity. That's it. That's the main thing. Yes, there's other cool stuff about Linux, open source and a whole bunch of variety. And there's just a lot of things. But really, it boils down to this productivity. It makes me way more productive than most of the other population. So that's awesome. And just as an example, I've produced over 400 videos on YouTube in about 400 days. And that's kind of an insane amount. And that's not me hiring other people and those types of things because I don't have an editor. I don't have any of that stuff but I've able to produce a ton of content and that's thanks to Linux. So let's break down productivity. So maybe you could uh, get into Linux, figure out a lot of these things and make yourself far more productive. Now, before we begin, I do live stream over on Twitch, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if you wanna ask me a question live, be sure and head over there. Now, let's talk about productivity. Now, I'm going over the ways I use my computer and how I use them in Linux in comparison to Windows because I think these are all major things. So the first thing on the bucket list is email. How do you use email? Because almost everyone lives out of their email inbox. And you probably aren't going to like this answer as I wouldn't like this answer a year ago. I used to live in Microsoft Outlook. I couldn't do anything without Microsoft Outlook. And I'm talking about the desktop application. I would just sit in there, I'd make rules. I, you know, just a ton. I was an extreme power user of Outlook. But I realized Outlook was pretty basically controlling me. I was sitting there, every buzz, pop up, all this stuff was just very detrimental to my productivity. And what I did when I came over to Linux, I tried a whole bunch of different email applications and none of them I really liked. And then finally, I realized, you know, for my actual YouTube channel, I use like Gmail and for my day job, I still use Outlook, but I use Outlook online. That means a lot of the notifications and stuff I have turned off so I don't get a bunch of dings and, you know, beeps in the middle of, you know, producing content or uh, doing uh, repairing a computer or whatever it might be do I might be doing in my day job. I will say this, it's way better for me to prioritize things and get things done by checking my email three times a day. So I left everything in the browser actually for this and I'm so much happier and I'm so much more productive. You can do this in any operating system, but I wanted to at least touch on email because it's the first thing people look at because there is no native outlook desktop client and honestly the online version even as a power user most of the, what i need is there and that's really cool and i since i'm not in it all the time anymore it's even less of a concern for me and outlook online has continually improved over the years so i just want to go ahead and throw that out there as i do still do rules and a lot of the other power user type things i uh, just i i want to go ahead and just say you know, email is one thing I need to address because too many people live in their email inbox and you need to get out of that habit. And I know one of my big reservations is like, what happens if my boss emails me and I don't respond right away? And uh, you, your boss, you're just gonna have to get over that. I mean, it's gonna, you know, it might be a couple hours and you'll respond. But at the end of the day, you're way more productive. At the end of the day, your boss is gonna look at your ROI. How much crap did you get done? And as long as you're getting all your stuff done, being an immediate responder doesn't matter uh, because results speak for themselves. So with the email out of the way, I'm gonna go into video production real fast. And if you wanna skip this section, you know, I'm only not gonna dwell on it, but basically I use all open source and free software. So video production and image editing and those types of things is very costly, especially on Windows. Typically you're using Adobe and this can be a big issue. Uh, a lot of times, you have to relearn these things. And I've done an entire video showing the workflows between Photoshop and GIMP and maybe Caden Live and Premiere. Uh, I'll link it up in the actual description here or actually uh, the actual title card there you'll see in the upper right. But uh, these things are different and I like them after I learned them. And it just requires a month or two of hacking around to really 
get this. And I understand some people can't sacrifice their current workflow and learn a new one, but I will say I'm so happy I did. I'm way more productive. I'm able to shoot, edit, and then do all the SEO, image generation, all that within an hour or two, which is amazing where I think a lot of counterparts using this old dated workflow that you know is either in Mac or Windows, uh, a lot of times they're spending upwards of eight hours. Um, so it, it's just a very different workflow. I really, really enjoy this new way. And I, I, it, honestly, even if you don't go to Linux, you can adopt a lot of these free and open source tools and use them just as well, if not better than, than the paid counterparts from Adobe and uh, some of the other big names out there. Now, stepping into really where I pick up all my productivity, and that's just general computer usage. I use the hell out of workspaces. And what workspaces are is I can just press a number on my keyboard and it gives me a fresh desktop. So I usually have a lot of my desktops dedicated. And I'll, I'll flip over the, the actual desktop so you can actually see what I'm talking about when it comes to productivity and flipping between these. So let's go over the actual productivity. Now I made an entire video called Make My Desktop Awesome that I kind of go about how to set this up in Linux. But I have all these different workspaces over on this side of the screen. And the first one is my browser. Obviously, if I need to use a web browser, I can just hit it. The next one down is the actual terminal. So a lot of things in Linux go into terminal. You know, some people say you can just stick with the graphic user interface. Um, but really, terminals just makes you so much more efficient and product productive in Linux. So I think it's almost a mandatory to learn it uh, because it is just so stinking awesome. Yes, you can probably not use it and still be all right. But uh, at the same time, you're really giving up a lot of productivity by not using it. So that's why I use it. Uh, next up is my chat. That's workspace three, the little chat icon down here. And I'm actually using just a hotkey to switch between these. But here's my chat, which is Discord. Next up is my little game controller, which has Steam up and going here where I can play my recent games. And I could be like in a game and go, you know what, I need that browser. And I can just hit my browser window to get back to the browser. I'm like, okay, I'm done. And then come right back into my game. Just so seamless that it's just awesome. Next up is like my file browser. Now this is uh, Conquer or Crusader actually. Uh, uh, Crusader here is just a basic file explorer where you can copy paste and this is a bit much because you can do um, F2, F3, all these things to edit, view, copy, move just seamlessly with an F key. Now if this is too much for a person, obviously we can just quit out of this and then I can launch into just a basic browser and you get more of a traditional file explorer doing it this method so either or it depends on what i'm trying to do but if i'm going to be really moving a lot of files and doing stuff i'll use crusader and if it, it's really just more of a simplistic task like looking at downloads or something i might just pull up the basic file explorer here uh, but this is just the power of linux just having those options and learning those options it's amazing uh then we got the music thing i don't actually use a music player on uh linux I just pull up a Monster Cat or Spotify would, you know, pick your poison. And then finally, the little vial here is where I do all my creations, which would be your Caden Live, or I could launch GIMP with just, uh, you know, going over to GIMP and then launching into it and doing some image editing over here. All this with just hotkeys, which is just super amazing. I absolutely love just having the hotkeys to fly between all my stuff. And if I just quit out of whatever I need. Now, how much does all this running in the background utilize? Another thing that makes you productivity, one, you update when you want, but also look how light this is. It's only three gigs and I literally have every program open that I could possibly want to run right now. That's amazing. It's so darn light. That's Discord going, that's Vivaldi or Chrome, you know, what, what pick your poison, whatever it might be. But it is just so stinking light. It's so fast. Everything just works very, very well. Um, and that's why this is why I'm always preaching about productivity in Linux. Yes, yeah, starting out learning that new flow kind of stinks, but once you get it and you get it to this type of level, you're, you're going to be on a plane that no one else, no Windows or Mac users can even touch you when it comes to productivity. And really, my final point here is apps for your needs. That's what Linux gives me. When it comes to my computer, I wanna choose my file browser. I wanna choose 
uh, how my computer responds. I want to choose when it does updates. I want to choose a lot of things that Windows and Mac just don't give me. This is probably the most important aspect of Linux, but also the hardest to really master. And it's something that I'm continually getting better at. Uh, as I've been on it for a year and just lived in it, I'm still like, I, I think I'm like 25, 30% of the actual understanding I need to really get a good comprehension of everything it has to offer. So a good example of it is this week, I've always used just the stock file manager because I've always been like a Nautilus or Dolphin, which was these basic file managers that are, are a lot better than like Windows File Explorer, for ex example. But I, I looked at like something called Conquer with a K and it is amazing how much stuff is baked into this one file manager to where I can do so much. I can edit, view, do all these right inside the file browser, uh, launch terminal, all these different tasks without ever really missing a beat, just pressing one key and, and just being able to do it right then and there and get right back into my workflow. This saves me literally hours per day uh, because I'm able to flip through everything I need instead of launching into some third-party application and really going through it when it's all just integrated and it's tightly, you know, uh, integral to, with, to the actual operating system, which is Linux. It's amazing. But I want to leave you with this final thought. Linux is what you make it. When I first got on Linux, I had to say it wasn't a good experience. I looked at it, I was like, oh, this is cool. This is different. But I don't know how to do anything. This is so weird. There's so many things about Windows I just know because Windows works one way, just like Mac OS works one way. You just learn how to use that and then you just accept whatever limitations they have because you can't really change that much of the actual base operating system and how you your computer functions. And Linux just doesn't work like that everything's configurable, everything can be changed, everything can be optimized so you can be more productive. But it's not an overnight thing. I think so many people are, are kind of disingenuous about how hard it can be on a new user. I, I know as a 20 year Windows power user, it was very difficult for me that first you know month or two. And it was actually what I got started on my YouTube channel was the Linux 30 day challenge. And you can check out that playlist to Please excuse the old webcam and uh, the old Yeti mic I was using, but it was just such a, a powerful but frustrating experience. That first month, I would say the first two months, I was just not sold on Linux. I was just like, I don't know about this. This is there's a lot to really unpack here, and it just doesn't feel quite baked. And it, once I finally just gave up trying to make it work like Windows or make it work like a Mac and just figure out what works best and figure out what's most efficient, what's most productive and just say, screw everything I know and just go for what works. That's when things really started to happen. And even a year later after, after the switch, I'm sitting here going, oh man, there's just so much I don't know. There's so much that I still need to learn. And, uh, that's what I'm doing. And that's kind of what this whole video is about, just to kind of try and tell people why. Because I think so many people think I'm some kind of Linux fanboy and then I'm like all about uh, this aspect of it. Most people tote like open source and all these other reasons for Linux. But for me, it boils down to, I just want to use what's best for me, what's most efficient, what I can get the most work done. And uh, it's Linux by far now. But it didn't start out that way. It was a rough start. But now that I'm in it, I can't imagine my life without it. So with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. I'm always interested to read the comments and see on, on these videos because it's just it's such an amazing experience. And uh, thank you guys for uh, watching these videos. And it's really amazing. We hit 100K finally, uh, which is just Great. And I say finally, God, it's been only a, a little over a year. So thank you guys for watching the content. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.